Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we've got a multimeter review, it's the Tesman TM510. So let's uh, go to the bench and take a look. Okay, so this is the uh, Tesman TM510 smart digital multimeter. Um, so let's have a look what we get in the box. Um, and we've got some instructions. And we've got the meter itself in a carrying case. I'm going to put that box to one side for a moment. The um, instructions here are in several languages, but um, certainly perfectly uh, comprehensible uh, and nice, nice little manual actually. So here's the meter in a box, in a little bag. And um, I guess if you're an electronics hobbyist, you're not terribly bothered about a little bag. Uh, but I think this little bag is particularly useful and also particularly significant because uh, these kind of meters are the kind of meters that are going to end up in somebody's toolbox and they're probably going to get used for checking DC voltage uh, maybe to detect, detect a mains cable and maybe on occasions to check continuity and that's probably uh, what they're going to spend their lives doing because I suspect that's what actually most meters that are kept in a toolbox actually do and the reason I'm so keen on the bag is that if that's in your toolbox it's going to survive a great deal longer than just a, a meter in the toolbox. Now the meter itself, um, quite a nice chunky unit, does actually have a protective boot on it but clearly you know it's not going to be um, as strong as something that's in a, a nice little padded bag so I like that. Um, so we've got a set of leads uh, we've got the meter itself, obviously, and uh, we've got the usual functions on the meter. We'll, we'll go through those in a moment. Um, but as well as uh, being a meter, it's also got a little uh, flashlight uh, on the back, or torch as we call it over here in uh, in Europe. Um, and again, it's perhaps tempting to think, oh, well, yeah, what use is that? Well, actually, it's quite a lot of use. Um, did you ever think you'd be using your telephone um, to uh, find something in the dark? Uh, plenty of people use the torch on the mobile phone now. Uh, and if you're trying to do something, you need a little bit of extra light. It's there to hand without any trouble. And it's just a long press on the uh, uh, this button here to turn the, the light on. Uh, so the meter runs off two AA batteries. I've already installed them. So I'm going to get uh, set up now uh, so we can look at it taking some measurements. Okay, what I thought I'd do this time is actually build a little circuit and we could see if the um, smart capability of the meter was uh, able to pick up uh, both AC and DC voltages in the circuit. So what I've built, very simply, I've got AC supply coming here on the top left. I've got one diode working as half-wave rectifier. I've got a 100 microfarad smoothing capacitor. I've got a 7805 voltage regulator there, just configured um, in a very basic setup with the centre pin to ground and then I've got a current limiting resistor and an LED acting as the load so we've got a, a an actual circuit that is taking AC, rectifying it, smoothing it, producing 5 volts and then that's running this LED as you can see there. So first thing we'll check is the AC input voltage and the meter has changed, hopefully you can see there has changed to uh, AC and it's saying about 9. Point, well 9.34, 9.35 volts AC. So let's pop the um, oscilloscope probe on to that AC input and see what the scope makes of it. Um, I'll take a grab of the scope so you can uh, see that. So we've got, um, according to the measurement on the scope of RMS, we've got 9.32 volts, which pretty much agrees with the meter. So that's uh, clearly making RMS measurements which is good and if you're wondering what the waveform is looking a little bit odd on the top that's because remember we've got half wave rectification on the positive going cycle uh, it is under load so that'll be what will be just up, um, altering the, the shape of the, the waveform we could obviously optimize the components to, to to solve that but for the purpose of this exercise that's absolutely fine so certainly correctly identifies AC so let's now move on to the, um, beyond the diode, onto the smoothing capacitor, where we should have DC. Um, so if I can find a connection to get onto there. And the meter has now gone to 
DC volts correctly and it's saying about 11 point apologies that's me that's just moving the connection there it's about 11.1 volts something like that so 11.1 volts DC on the smoothing capacitor let's um, drop some cursors onto the scope and let's pop the scope onto the same point so you can see we've got a ripple there which the smoothing capacitor is doing its best to sort out but hasn't quite so I've just positioned the cursor lines for you I'll just move that up very slightly I'm trying to get roughly the middle that's saying about um, 10.8 no, 10 10.9 volts something like that um, so this that's debatable exactly where you'd put the line obviously but um, I'm trying to get a bit of an average there so yeah um, that's agreeing pretty much with what the meter says okay so beyond the um, 7805 regulator we've got um, the circuit under load so it's realistic so let's see what voltage we're getting um, going into the uh, current limiting resistor there at the output of the 7805 and it would be really helpful if I put the probes the right way around so we got a positive voltage instead of a minus one I'm sure the result would be the same if you took the minus off right so I've got about about 5.63 volts there something like that coming out of the um, 7805 yeah about 5 point let's call it 5.6 for argument's sake so we'll pop the uh, scope probe onto the output of there I've got the scope attached DC I'm going to turn up the uh, amplitude a little bit and then we'll bring the cursor line down and that's saying 5.36 volts there, there's a screen grab for you to look at so the uh, meter in my view is producing accurate measurements on a real world circuit um, and the scope uh, is uh, agreeing with um, what that says so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to get set up to measure a couple of uh, uh, resistances so I'll do that and then I'll come back okay as I mentioned earlier I guess this kind of meter is going to be in somebody's toolbox it's going to get used for the odd DC voltage measurement it's going to get used maybe to check if um, you know some domestic electric works on, on AC and it's probably going to get used for, for, for continuity um, so we'll do that in a moment but I've got a couple of resistors here so I've got uh, uh, one that's just over 8 mega ohms here and I've got a uh, 150 ohms there to just to give you a, an idea of how she does on those kind of things so if I just let it stabilize it's saying 8.06 mega ohms uh, my LCR meter makes that um, resistor to be 8.07 mega ohms, so I think that's um, that's pretty good for such a high resistance. Unless you're into uh, your valve circuits, you're unlikely to be using um, resistors quite that high. The LCR meter makes this resistor to be about 148, 149 ohms, something like that, and you can see that's hovering between 146 and. Uh, We've got 145 there let's see if we can get a better connection okay yeah 148 that's pretty much agreeing exactly with the lcr meter so resistance uh, is accurate um now i think this is the use this meter will get most uh, which is continuity so if we hold the probes together we get a uh, green led indication above the display we get the audible sound which you can hopefully hear I quite like the LED in a noisy environment where if you'd got say an engine running or a motor uh, you'd still be able to see there's a visual indication there uh, of, uh, of continuity so uh, that uh, that's rather nice and the other facility that's worth checking on here is the uh, NCV for checking um, the presence of, uh, of a live cable so a long press on this button here sets us into NCU mode now I've got a live cable here so we'll advance the meter towards it the sensing area is at the top and it's already showing up something so we're getting slow beeping and a green LED with an L indicated as we begin to approach it and if we move closer it starts to beep faster and we get the H and the red LED as we're right next to it so that's the uh, NC uh, 
NCV function and NCU as it says on the display you can't display a V on that to display uh, that another long press on that will return it back to auto this also is the button that uh, doubles for the hole function um, and this right hand button is probably worth talking about uh, that turns off the backlight uh, the meter does have uh, auto on auto off which you can disable if you want and a long press on that one turns on the flashlight on the back there which you can hopefully uh, see and then a long press will will turn that off so there we go that's the tesman uh, multimeter um seems to uh, do what it says Okay, well that's it for the look at the Tesman TM510 Smart Multimeter. Uh, the ideal meter, I think, for keeping in your toolbox. It's got a nice padded case, so it's going to survive the, the bumps and the scrapes it's doubtless going to um, encounter when it's uh, having a hard life inside a toolbox. And it does the measurements that most people will actually need. Uh, voltage, AC, DC, uh, continuity and resistance. And I think those are the kind of things that uh, probably the vast majority of multimeter users in the world actually use their meter for. Um, electronics hobbyists probably need uh, more facilities, uh, but actually this is the kind of thing I'd keep in my car, um, because it gives you the measurements you actually need if you're trying to fix a little problem. So I hope that's been useful. In the description you'll find a couple of links to um, to the Amazon page of uh, Tesman website where you can get these meters. There's a link to the uh, UK site and also to the United States site. So if it interests you, please take a look there. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video.